at the Cine Gear 2018 in Los Angeles. Hello, my name is Christopher and this is my colleague Kevin. Hi. My name is Kevin Parker and I look after regions in Europe, India and uh, the Middle East as well as a little bit in Russia. Fantastic. Yeah. What are you going to show us today? Yeah, we show all you today. Some beautiful Leica yes, equipment. Yes, well, Leica lenses and you see on the wall what we all cover from Red Canon, Sony and Ari. The only cool. idea of the chance is to show sensor sizes in cameras, mm -hmm. so that's right the way really for larger format cameras, and to show you the lenses that you need to cover those formats. Mm. Very cool. Can you show? Do you have some that we can actually look at? Sure. Yeah. Start with Aria. Yeah. Well, we'll, here. we'll end here. This is a Aria Alexa mini camera, mm -hmm. and we have here one of our latest lenses. This is a Leica. Um, 50, milli 50 millimeters 1.4 and it is mounted on the Aria Alexa mini mount and the mount is available since uh, April this year and this lens we will ship and we start shipping in the summertime. Fantastic. Also we have new two lenses with Summicron APO 75 millimeters and 90 millimeters also shipping in the summertime so the whole set of the MOA lenses is eight lenses in total. Is that shooting on that monitor? Yeah. Can we flip the monitor so we can see it? Oh, hello. There we are. <laughs> Very cool. Nice. Hello, Tema. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. And everywhere. Very cool. Um, so how much How much does one rent or purchase that lens for? The price? Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? Yeah, how much is it? Uh, the price is uh, it depends on the lens, and in dollars it's between seven thousand and fifteen thousand dollars okay. around the price range. Yeah. Right. I think a whole set, a whole set of uh, M O A lenses is wait a minute, yeah, around sixty thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah, a whole set around. Yeah. First set for five lenses. Yeah. Starting at twenty one. Are they all prime? They're all prime lenses? Yeah. Okay. And then if you want to add some zooms in there, it just keeps Do this one here? This is a zoom. Yeah, no, this is a prime. Prime, that's prime. Lens, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. All we have at the moment is, is prime lenses. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so this lens is in traditional sort of a stills housing. And then as you see the other lenses that we have, more of a city housing, yeah. mm -hmm. which is Peel Mountain. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. Does anybody have questions? I know you do. Not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Good. What, what else can we look at? I can, we can show you the city lens. The we, the city lens. Yeah, yeah, we would love that. He has a lot of like. Excuse me. Uh, oh. What so as you can see, on the red. Yeah, as you can see visually, that looks a lot different. It's yeah. a bigger lens. It's yeah. Peel Mountain. Right. Um, what we're showing here is our new set called Thalia, mm -hmm. which is nine focal lengths, starting at 24. Ah. And this covers the larger format that I mentioned earlier yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have one on the, the Monstro, which is a large format camera, mm -hmm. Sony Venice in the middle, mm -hmm. and then, no, sorry, yeah, and then Alexa. again, the Ari LF. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Which are all large format cameras, so we want to show our large format lenses. That's pretty cool. So, um, so I won a, one of the new the new Black Magic camera, the little yeah. teeny weeny one that yeah. they just came up with. Would I be able to? Do I need adapter if I were going to use one of your lenses? Uh, they do uh, for the Black Magic. I believe they do a PL adapter anyway. Mm -hmm. So we'll take PL mounted lenses. And yeah, they will work on on the Black Magic camera, no problem. Oh, that's cool, and I bet yeah. it looks pretty great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you tried it yet? Or? I haven't. No, no. But we've had the guy from Black Magic come to us at NAB. Oh yeah. And have a look at the lenses on, on the camera there. That is cool. I was at NAB. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was an yeah. amazing yeah. show, huh? But the, the lenses we have here, the large format lenses, I show you, aren't just for large formats. Mm -hmm. They will cover the large format, but they will also cover all of the formats below that as well. Oh right. Physical. So they're not That's just pretty for great. large format. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. amazing. So for a future proof investment on equipment. It's probably the way to go. So yeah. you're covered all the way through. So. Exactly. And they're gorgeous lenses, so, yeah. you know. Gives you that traditional like a look. Yeah, <laughs> you can't get any better than that. Very cool. Nice. So what else should we look at? Yeah, we have here the Alexa. Okay. Let's see this. 
And the mount is mounted with an LPL mount. Okay. Yeah. What does LPL stand for? For what it stands? LPL? What does that stand for? Uh, I think, I'm not sure. It's, it's, from one, it, it's a larger format camera from Ari, from so Ari, I think yeah. it must be large format PL. Yeah. Because their existing mount is just called PL. This is called LPL. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's I, a little It's like bigger. XLPL. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's a slightly bigger mount. So, so can I put an LPL to PL mount on uh, a white portfolio mount? Yes, yeah. And put it in any For, for the LF, LPL? you can. If you have a PL mounted lens, you can mount it on the LPL camera. Yeah. Just with a little adapter. So you have the... Yeah. XPL is the Alexa 65. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we have that also. Oh, hi. Hi, how are you doing? Just run right into the video. No, it's okay. okay. Yeah, we're live. Right. Say hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. What's going on? Um, been running all over Cine Gear. It's been really hot. If you're not here, it you're missing out, but you're also feeling a lot better. Exactly. You need to bring a bottle of water with yeah. you. Or they have alcohol here. Uh, they do have alcohol on site. They do. Which and a few vendors do to too, come. if you ask the right ones. Oh, really? Not us. Sorry. Don't come oh, here man. asking for it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are we allowed to say? Can I know? Yeah. I'm just going to ask every single vendor I run into. I'll be you like, should. oh, where's the cocktail? You'll find them. Yes, no doubt. <laughs> They'll find me, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> They'll sniff me out a mile away. Well, they're like, oh yeah, cocktail time. For sure. So what's going on? Yeah, so we're um, we're here um, showing some of our new stuff, which is mostly large format based. Um, so and, they, and you can use them with smaller base too, right? Yeah, so, um, yeah. So we we really like the idea of, if it, just because you're increasing the format doesn't need to mean you need to increase your camera package size. Right. Um, if you want, you know, super fast, large format lenses, optically, physics-wise, you have to go bigger. But when you shoot larger format, you have a, a, a different perception, a different uh, relative depth of field to your image because you're using longer focal lengths on wider shots. Right. So if you're doing it from a lighting perspective, you always light to the lens regardless. Mm -hmm. Whatever it says on the lens, that's how you light your scene. But if you're talking about composition and depth of field, then when you're in larger formats, you start to think, okay, I'm framing for what would normally be a 50, but I'm using a 75. A 75 has a, long, a shorter depth of field, so you're getting more of that depth of field compression, background mag um, right. magnification, right, right. because you're using a larger sensor, getting a wider image. Very cool. Yeah, so our lenses, we, we took that into consideration, allowed our lenses to be a little slower by Super 35 standards, but by large format standards, they're pretty easy to work with to get a really shallow depth of field. Mm -hmm. You know, even our 24, we're showing our 24 millimeter Talia here, which close focuses to eight inches from the fill plane, which is almost wow. the front of the lens. And you wow. can still get, it's a T3.6, but you can still get, with a larger sensor, razor shallow depth of field if you want to. So you saying that we could be like, hello? Yes, you can. Oh, man. I yes. can handle that. <laughs> Man, Just wear eye protection yeah, if, you're like, the, like, if you're like the talent. Like walker. It you know, really we're, is. We're going to be like close, you know, mouth breather style. Yes, exactly. Like it. it's, okay, cool. it's the uh, the Chivo look to the extreme. <laughs> That's, a great... yeah. That's pretty rocking. Yeah. So, okay, so if we were that close, are you saying... That would be in focus and everything behind it would be soft? Super soft, yeah. Super soft, okay, because yeah. that's a nice look. It is, but you could always stop down to get more depth of field too. Right, you know? right, right. It depends right. on what you want to see. But you know, if you if you remember Hateful Eight, for the people that oh, saw sure. Hateful Eight, oh, yeah, yeah. they did a lot of that large format stuff where right on the side of the frame, you have, you know, Samuel L. Jackson, this big, you yeah. know, frame there, and then you have the whole scene behind him opened up because of that wider aspect ratio. Right, right, right. And so that's this was one, all anamorphic, wasn't it? It was, but it's when you do that large of a format, it's a really small squeeze anamorphic. Yeah. It's like a 1.25 squeeze when you use a larger format. Yeah. Um, because you don't need to, you're getting so much more information, you don't have to de-squeeze as much. Sure. Um, so yeah, but you can, now a lot of the larger format sensors are actually using a, a wider aspect ratio natively anyway. Right. Um, can you explain, because some people in the audience on our video may not understand about anamorphic, how when you're shooting it, it's 
squished. Right. And yes. And then you unsquish it. Yes. So uh, with, with anamorphic, there's an element in there called a cylindrical element, and it actually is curved like a cylinder. And what that does is it takes what you would normally take in this information, it pushes it together like this. So it, it uses a smaller portion of the sensor, and it's actually using a smaller resolution. So if you're using, let's say, a 6K wide resolution sensor, 6,000 pixels across, and you shoot anamorphic, you're maybe cropping to like 4K or 3, 6K in what you capture in this four by three aspect ratio. And then what you do in post and in visualization is it actually stretches that image and it basically doubles. If you're doing a two times anamorphic, you're gonna add, you're gonna double all the pixels you just captured yeah. in a computer processing algorithm. So when we talk about anamorphic, we're talking about these very epic films like Lawrence of Arabia, the old style films that were in 70 millimeter. And the reason historically they did that is because when TV came out, like why would you bother going to the movies for 35? Exactly. You need something freaking monster epic. Right. So they started making these movies that were, you know, just, I mean, not surround, surround, but it had to be big. It had to be this, yeah. not four by three. It had yeah. to feel like this huge yeah. monster yeah. smoke yeah. and really amazing. As opposed to immediate and, exactly. you know, a square box that you see at home. Right. Like 35, which is essentially exactly what you're saying. So I have two quick questions. Yes. Um, so when you talk about squeezing anamorphic, are you actually just using a portion of that or are you, like, digitally, like, compressing it? Because that's so, the difference. Is it cropping or compressing? Uh, it, it is a great question. It is, it's actually, it's an optical process. Yeah. So you do an optical compression of Got the it. image. Okay, so you're not losing anything. You're just downscaling it. Right, so you're, you're, you're actually capturing. So this is kind of the cool part. You're capturing... A, a 240 aspect ratio, super yeah. wide aspect ratio image. In its originality. In yes. its originality, but you're pushing that image into a smaller mm -hmm. part of the sensor. Uh, and then you squeeze it out. So you're capturing what you see, but it, because of the limitations of, of analog film, right. these lenses were designed right, right, right. to take this wide angle and put it on a smaller piece of film. Right. Yeah. Because then you could use the cameras you were already using, the film stocks you're already using. You didn't have to develop anamorphic cameras. Right. Otherwise, you would have blend. to do. Yeah. Now your film has to be bigger. Right. So right. rather than change the cameras and change the film, just change the lens. They change the lenses Smart. and they use the existing yeah. film frame. So right. we have that legacy now where we have digital sensors. They could make a super wide digital sensor. You know, I think Samsung has like a two four zero aspect ratio television. Mm -hmm. You know. So yeah, they're trying to do Olympics in sixteen k like in twenty twenty. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. You know, it's right. Japan. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. So so. You have, so we still use those lenses, so the sensors have kind of stayed in roughly the same aspect ratio. Um, but we do see people now doing that aspect ratio in spirit yeah. for a I've variety of reasons. Like trade shows because they're like we're doing like three like projection screens at like a three to one ratio. Right. So I just take the map box and tape and tape and be like, this is what we're shooting. Everything else doesn't count. Yeah. And then done. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I'm just faking it. If right. You know. Yeah. You're well. You're you're using the aspect ratio, but you're actually using a wider part of the sensor than if you were using uh, anamorphic anyway. Very cool. Okay, so you, and you had another question. Yeah, they did. What about digital metadata? So, like, VFX is a big thing that a lot of people shoot. Yes. And so, obviously, to go to post and to re-replicate, and it seems that we've shot that we have to go back and reshoot. Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. easier than taking your No, I have a human take notes. <laughs> right, right. So, so, like, how do you get data out of these? How much data do you get? Like, just kind of walk me through that. Sure. So, the our, our Leica Talia lenses are the first lenses that we've done metadata with. Uh, we use the Cook Slash I protocol, okay. which is... A, an open protocol that every lens company uses um, and we pass the, the basic information the serial number of the lens focus marks iris marks um, and, and frame by frame consistent information so everything is frame specific so if you're pulling focus it tracks with every frame um, what you can add into that is if you want to as a as a a pre-step before you shoot is you could actually have the post-production facility map the lenses 
and then they can apply that into the metadata. The protocol is there, but we don't pre-map the lenses. Um, there's some issues like if, you, if the lens needs to be serviced, all the lens mapping needs to be redone again. If you change any elements, if the front element gets scratched and replace it, you have to remap it because no, there's no perfect replacement. Um, so we, we don't take that step now. Um, it's, it's a cool thing to do, but for us, it would really, it just has this something we've adopted. No, it makes sense. Why put something out there that's going to change and then people are going to be like, why does this work? When in fact, when in actuality, there's a hundred variables as to why it will and will not work. Yeah. Right. And now if you're if you're in an environment where you're an owner operator and they're your lenses and you know how they're treated, where they're at, then you have a little more consistency. But in a rental environment where there's shimming, there's all kinds of changes that happen to lenses. Maybe you're swapping mounts. Um, you may need to take consideration, is that going to be as accurate as as it would be if we just shot tests? And do you guys have a lens mount changeable, changeable lens mount system now? Yeah, so for the for the Leica Talias, um, we do, they come in PL. We're also going to offer the LPL for Aries LF Alexa camera. Um, and we do have an XPL for people that use the Alexa 65 large camera as well. Um, we don't do a, an EF mount uh, at the moment, but yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for hosting us. Oh, thank you. This is so much fun. fun. It is fun. We had a isn't great it? time. Oh, yeah. Everybody else should come out to City Gear next year because this is like the most fun trade show. It's barely a trade show, it's really a social event. It really is. <laughs> yeah. That we're that happy to sponsor you. as, you know, exhibitors. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I guess we need to go find some alcohol. No, just kidding. We need to go right next door. All right. Thank nice. you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Bye. Cheers.